Good morning and welcome to Wake Up Call. I'm Keely McCormick. And I'm Malik Jackson. We have a packed show for you as always. We'll be talking about Trump's VA nomination. That's right. And we have a very special interview for you guys with a KU journalism student. And as always, we have good news. Today is April 25th, 2018. And Wake Up Call starts right now. <laughs> Welcome back to Wake Up Call. Now we're going to get started with the news. Absolutely. President Trump seemed to make a good selection as VA secretary, picking the White House doctor who has not only been his doctor since he assumed office, but also was the White House doctor under the Obama administration. But since Trump has announced Ronnie Jackson as his nominee for the position, he has come under fire. And now the confirmation here for Dr. Jackson has been suspended. After it came to light that as White House doctor, he has been caught heavily intoxicated several times and created a hostile work environment for his employees. And late last night, it broke that during an overseas trip, he banged on a female employee's door while drunk so bad that he had to be stopped by the Secret Service for fear that he could wake then-President Barack Obama. None of the claims have been substantiated, and Jackson has not withdrawn his nomination. This wouldn't be the first time the secretaries nominated by President Trump have came under heavy scrutiny. If we go back to his first year in office, Jeff Sessions was under fire for past racial comments and Betsy DeVos caused a whirlwind with her answers in front of the committee during her con confirmation hearing. A twist, a wild twist. And the White House is defending it by reading the kind words of Obama, but we should see how this plays out. A judge for the federal government overruled the Trump administration yesterday ordering the re reopening of the DACA program, the program which allows immigrants who were brought here at a young age to remain here legally. The Trump administration ordered its shutdown late last year, raising many eyebrows on the left and right. At the time, the president said this was done to put in a permanent solution. But fast forward 90 days till now, no permanent solution has been passed. But as of now, those applications for the DACA program have been reopened. And a man has been arrested in Dallas after a short manhunt Tuesday night in connection with the shooting that left two police officers wounded. Police say an off-duty officer called for backup in arresting a man at the Home Depot. The two officers who responded were shot and another loss prevention officer was wounded as well. It is unclear how the event unfolded and why shots were fired. And another bizarre story, over the weekend, Tennessee saw terror come their way after a gunman opened fire in a Waffle House, killing four and wounding another four. The gunman was stopped when a hero rushed in and threw his gun over the counter. The man proceeded to run out of the Waffle House nude. He was on the loose for 30 plus hours before being arrested and to gauge his mental stability, he said to authorities that he was being stalked by Taylor Swift. Hmm. Interesting. And just days after his wife died, George H.W. Bush was hospitalized. He's 93 years old, the longest living president, and according to a family spokesman, he's responding to treatments and appears to be recovering. He was originally in intensive care because he had an infection that spread to his blood. He's responsive now and in recovery, so we send our thoughts and prayers to him and his family during this difficult week. All right, and coming up after the break, I will be back with a special interview with a graduating journalism student, Jackson Kurtz, so stay tuned. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas. A great place to be, you. And welcome back to Wake Up Call. I'm now I'm sitting beside Jackson Kurtz, who's a graduating journalism senior right here at KU. How are you doing this morning? Doing good. Doing good. You know, you host an afternoon show, so this is a little early for you, right? Yeah, it's a little bit. Hey, but I'm here. I'm on Wake Up Call. I feel good. You okay. Know, I watched some news this morning. There we go. It's 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 uh it makes you feel good when you can get a good start, get a good cup of coffee, start the day early, rather than you. That's know, what I got my coffee over there. Yeah, shout out roasters to leave it over here. Okay, where should we start? 
Your Just years here at KU were, you're graduating, how does it feel? It feels like, uh, mm, I don't know, that's tough. I mean, you know, college was great, it was super fun. Uh, I learned so much, had so many opportunities, you know, every, every year. I mean, this is where I started. This was where Jasmine Polk started the show KUE News. And we used to come here and just do, just read off the teleprompter of all these entertainment stories. And, you know, that was really the first experience I had doing journalism. I did like a radio, I was kind of, I don't know what I was doing with radio, but it was super fun and, uh, you know, you learn so much from doing that and doing different things and failing, you know, messing up, that's what it's about. So you, like Rocky says, ain't about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep yeah. moving forward. How much you can take, okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean. He loves his movies yeah. if you can't tell. But, uh, you know, college is fun, it's good, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm done with doing uh, books and, not books. I like literature. Literature is great. I'm talking to like, yo, you need to study this for the test. Like, I ain't got time for that right now. I got. I got to. You're ready to graduate. I'm ready to graduate. I'm ready to go out into the new world. The new world. <laughs> it's like a Pocahontas. Or something. Yeah. Go out into the new world. It's and, undiscovered. Yeah, it's undiscovered. Go out into the new world and just, uh, you know, do my thing. So you is your time here as a KU journalism student. You started your own show, which was. That's I me. guess kind of based off of that E! News show, right? which was the next, which is an entertainment-focused show. It does have sports components, news components, but that was really your passion. So do you see foresee yourself going into that in your post-college career? Yeah, great question. Yeah, I, um, you know, being out in the real world, real world, this is the real world, being out in the professional media world, uh, you know, I got a taste of kind of sports, not that much entertainment, but I got some entertainment and majority of news. You know, I kind of realized that, you know, news is kind of the area where you want to focus on for what I want to do. I want to become, you know, someone that can be able to do everything. And just, uh, you know, if they say, hey, so let me think of somebody. Uh, I can't think of anybody right now, but uh, maybe that's a good thing. But, you know, somebody yeah, that they can you're you know, thinking of yourself. Yeah, well, do the news. And then, hey, we want, uh, you know, we need someone to, so remember when, when TNT had like the halftime or something like that, and they bring in like, they had Sam Jackson on. Like, I want to be Sam Jackson, but not obviously Sam, Samuel Jackson, but like a, you know, a reporter, like bring him in, see what his opinion on. He does news all the time, but hey, maybe he knows something about sports. So do that. And then, you know, I love pop culture. I love entertainment. Uh, last night I fell asleep to Prince's original 1984, Nothing Compares to You. Uh, original recording with unseen unseen footage of his rehearsal in 84, The Revolution. So that was awesome. But anyway, uh, you know that, uh, just knowing all those things and being able to do both, all three of those, really. Yes, um, well, that's being very versatile. So like, you know, like Good Morning America where you could like cover the Super Bowl, but also cover the Oscars, but then there's a hurricane that's hitting Florida, so you get to fly down like that, eh? Yeah, George Stephanopoulos, Amy Robach, they're all really good examples of journalists that have the ability to report, anchor, and, you know, do fun things. Robin are, Roberts as well, who mm -hmm. started off at ESPN, now and does Good Morning America, does the elections, all of that, but also hosts the Oscar red carpets and stuff. Versatility is very, very, very important. So, I agree. in your college experience, you've had the opportunity to intern at several different places, but one place that was really cool, you got to intern at CBS this morning. Tell us about it. Well, uh, going into the internship, I was a huge Charlie Rose fan. <laughs> that was my idol as well, guys. Yeah, I mean, he was the, he interviewed everybody. He was the man, and past tense. And, uh, you know, I was super excited. I, I used to literally watch those interviews. I would sit, I would, uh, you know, let's be honest, I'd go out the night before, and we had no school or anything, so I was just sitting in my bed and literally just, on YouTube, on his page, just watched. I'm like, I have to get to New York. I have to meet this person, this journalist, my journalistically or speaking idol. So, uh, you know, I get there. I got there a week late because the fellowship I was a part of started the same week as a CBS internship. Oh. So all the other CBS interns had a week on me, and so I was like, all right, I gotta get. Uh, I gotta when I get here, like I gotta represent. Like I gotta show these people. To you know, the real deal. Right, right. And so I was just a pansy, or not pansy, a, uh, <laughs> a pain in the arse 
when I got there because I was trying to get involved so much and I kind of realized like I need to just step back for a second and just realize everything. So, so what I did was I reached out to every single you know, anchor, I reached out to every correspondent, uh, exec, the executive producer for CVS this morning, CTM, Ryan Cadro. I reached, reached out to all these people just to get their advice and just talk to them. Like, what does it take to get where you're at? How did you, what's your journey like and everything? And 99% of them responded and 99% of them were, uh, you know, helpful. gave me helpful. So uh, my tasks were, you know, I did a lot of different things, but, um, you know, I did a group project. My group project uh, was a three-minute story, and we had to present it in front of all these CBS news executives. And you anchored it, right? Yeah, I was the anchor. And to my recollection, you guys won the competition. We won. And when we, sell, or when we showed the executives, it was uh, C, uh, CBS anchor Anthony Mason, Steve Campus, who and who used to be the president, or sorry, the executive producer at Nightly News at NBC, and he now he was at the time he was the Evening News at CBS. Susan Zerinsky, which was Forty Eight Hours the well, executive producer, yeah. she's got the whole movie broadcast news based about her, and then. Vladimir Dutier, uh, Vlad, who became one of my other mentors, who I met with and I would, everything, and he was super helpful. But I mean, at the time, I was like, "This is." So those that was the panel of judges. Yes, and, and I you. was just terrified, just seeing, just like, what they like me. Were they? Were they? Were they? Uh, like, did they watch the broadcast, or did they just? You guys did it, and then they watched it back. We walked into the room, we played it, and we sat there while they watched it. Oh, okay. And uh, it was intimidating as. But I have to imagine it's to produce a package there. It's much uh, easier with all the resources that they have. Yeah, it was hard though because <laughs> because my shift was 5 a.m. to 1 oh. p.m. And that was, and so we had to do it off the time that we weren't working. Um, granted, we had some days off, but I also had my fellowship where I had to go to, you know, Facebook or iHeartMedia or Complex or some one of these companies and hear like a panel or something. And uh, so I would wake up at four o'clock, you know, shower real quick, put on my suit, uh, take the Uber, get to 57th Street, work a little bit. Uh, it's one o'clock, go get some lunch, I'm off work, go shoot the thing, go to another panel. And then my best friend would text me and say, what are you doing tonight? And I would say- Oh, so then you have this- You can't, uh -huh. folks. <laughs> Life's too short. Yeah, yeah you you're gotta, in New York for you one in summer. New York for you're a summer. intern. You have to kind of just live your life. As he would say, you're not going to not go out in New York. Exactly. If not, if not, not if that's not your thing. That's fine, but you got to do something. Whether it's the opera, Broadway, the bookstores, uh, museums, libraries, anything. There's so, so much to do. Just New York was. I was a huge Hamilton fan. I went to Columbia and I saw a statue. I went to his house in Harlem, had some chicken. This fried chicken sandwich, which to this day is like the best. So I mean, just so just awesome. after college, you're it's like what two one uh, like a week and a half left, and you're done. I got seventeen days. Oh, he has the number down. In those seventeen 16. days, do we know what we're doing after? You know what I'm doing? I'm gonna be a news reporter slash maybe anchor. Oh, um, depends on the station and what they <laughs> what rules they want. Do we know what me. station we're going to? We don't know what station we're going to. Do we to. know what station we want to go to? Yes. Do we have a top three? I'm not Come going on. To, I'm not going to reveal anything. Oh, you can't. You can't. I, I mean, I don't want to. I'll you know, secret. Secret. Well, I can't. I know we're. I know we're broadcast around the world, so they'll probably hear about it. But come on, give us a, your top three. It's in the east and south. Southeast. Those. They're, they're located there. That Good doesn't companies. give me anything. Huh? It doesn't give me anything. Got to research it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard about one of them. One of them. Um, as I moved to Georgia, it's one of them is particularly close to me, but if he won't give a hint, I won't give a hint either. But hey, thank you for all you've done for me. This is sort of my mentor at KU. Took me under his wing and look at me Malik's now. Got it. Malik's got it on lock, folks. We're, it's going to be okay. So I am partially the way I am because of this guy. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. And coming up. Hold on. The, hold, wait, wait, wait. wait. There we go. Oh, for the there culture. For the there culture. You already know. And you can see us Friday on the next 3 p.m. KUJH TV. When we come back, we can review.
welcome back to Wake Up Call. Thank you, Malik and Jackson, for that great interview. Now it's time for Week in Review, stories that aren't necessarily at the top of the news, but matter to you. And yes, they do matter, and today we start off with some sad news. Someone who had a profound impact on me and my education has died. Schoolhouse Rock creator Bob DeRuff passed away yesterday at the age of 94, but his impact didn't because of him. So many people, kids, adolescents, people of all ages now understand grammar, math, and civics just a little bit better. So we send our condolences to his family this morning. And now to the opposite end of the spectrum, the Duchess of Cambridge, William and Kate gave birth to their third child Monday, and it was another boy. Coming in at eight pounds, seven ounces, the baby boy is fifth in line to the throne. Okay, so first off, eight pounds, seven ounces, is that a big baby or not? I feel like all babies are eight pounds. How much were you when you weighed, or like, when you were born? I was eight pounds, like nine ounces. I was 12 pounds, so. My, okay, we're gonna, yeah. oh my God, <laughs> you should have not disclosed that. That is unreasonable, oh, that's I was incredible. a big baby. Yeah. Okay, moving from that, he's fifth from the third. Okay, we can't even segue from here. <laughs> We're just gonna move along. Donald Trump announced this week that he plans on running for re-election in 2020, but many Republicans so far that have been asked have been reluctant to throw support behind the president. And finally, just after two years since music legend Prince died, the district attorney from Minnesota announced there will be no charges filed, even though the pills Price took were, he took were laced. Authorities say they were unable to trace where exactly he got them from. That's sad, but he's, his tunes, just like the School of Rocks guy's tunes live on, his does too. That's right, we'll never Purple forget them. Purple rain. Yeah, sing it, Purple Link. rain. You're so talented. Alrighty, and now I've been told to toss to a video of Kylie Kardashian's baby, so take a look. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> oh my God, what, what is this? Oh Isn't my. that just the cutest thing? The baby's literally sleeping and like wakes up and starts smiling. Such oh. a happy child. You know, I have little cousins that are a little bit cuter than that. Cuter than Kylie Jenner's baby? Uh, ten times cuter. His head's kind of big. <laughs> you know when you you know that saying when you walk past a baby and they're like you know not good looking or whatever they just call, say they're precious. That baby's precious. That's a cute. That's a good looking baby. Moving along, Mick Meek <laughs> Mill will be released from prison. No, he was released from prison last night. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court ordered his immediate release. He said his time in jail has been a nightmare, and he thanked God, his family, and public advocates for love, support, and encouragement during this long process. He looks forward to getting back to his music career. And he took, I mean, talking about leaving jail and style, so he leaves jail and then immediately gets on a private helicopter and flies to an NBA game. Front row Whoa. seats, rings the bell at half court. He's Must winning. be nice. <laughs> should I go to jail now? I don't know. I don't think you should. <laughs> and Dwayne The Rock Johnson welcomed his baby girl into the world. The baby's name is Tia, and The Rock explained that he's excited to bring another strong girl into this world. And that picture right there is so See, now cute. That's cute. We can work with that. But the last one, I don't know. I don't know. I, like I that saw one. a tweet that said, The Rock and his pebble. Because, like, The Rock a little. Oh. <laughs> I, I thought it was funny. I Real was dying. All right, funny. whatever. You have no sense of humor. I, don't, I do have a great sense of humor. I'd like to think. All right, well, moving on from The Rock and His Baby, on to sports. All right, let's go. Tennis is up first. Debbie Voskersi has celebrated her Jayhawk career as the team dominated Oklahoma Sunday afternoon on Senior Day. Voskersi started strong with the first set win, 6-2, to two, but the second set was a closer score of 5-4 to four due to the match being clinched on the court four. The Jayhawks are now 15-5 and five and into the regular season tied in second place. The Jayhawks will now travel to Austin, Texas for the Big 12 championships starting this Thursday. Best of luck to them. You know, KU has more than just basketball. That's right. Refreshing to hear. We're second. We're good. And Kansas softball had a rough end of the season as the Baylor Bears demolished the Hawks in a three-game sweep. Senior third baseman Jesse Rohn went three for six at the plate in game one and singled in the first inning, game three, to extend her hitting streak to three games. In game one, sophomore first baseman Becky Monahan hit a home run inside Getterman Stadium, which the Baylor Bears have yet to do this season. To start the third inning on Sunday, senior catcher Harley Riding hit a double down left field, followed with a walk from Becky Monahan. The Hawks could not turn that lead off and they could not come back, but KU returns to Lawrence to host Omaha in the final conference game of the season, Tonight, four. 
Yeah, we're not, we don't seem to be very good at softball. Maybe we should get out there and cheer them on. Yeah, or maybe they should just recruit better. Who knows? Okay, UK State, Harvard, and Nebraska battled it out in the corner trying. Quadrangular. Quadrangular there you competition go. this weekend. But the Lady Jayhawks finalized the win with the 4 by 400 meter relay. They won nine events and had a total of 209 points. Nebraska had 181, K-State had 164, and Harvard had 104. Honorary Flynn, Flynn, Finley, Marlena Eubanks, Nicole Montgomery, and Megan Linder. A lot of names there, kid, in that script. Closed the competition when they finished eight seconds faster than second place, Harvard. In the men's quarter triangular competition. Quadrangular. KU track came a little short and finished second behind Nebraska. The final event has been a four by four. And Bryce Hopple was close, but not close enough. And that event went to Nebraska. And a few exceptional performances from this weekend. Drajay, let's take a video. Sophomore Gleb Duterev was in the spotlight as he crushed the hammer records. Became the number one performer in NCAA D1 this season, breaking the KU school record, KU Relays meet record, and Rock Chalk Park facility record. He became the number five performer in the world this year and number five in collegiate history with the winning mark of 78.04 meters. And our news director, Cal, was at the track relays. We should have talked to him, gotten him an interview to see how those went. Did you go down there? To the track relays? Yeah. I did not. Sports didn't make is it your out. passion. You didn't make it out there. I really didn't. Oh, man. But another great performance. Caroline Slattery got her career best in the 400 hur hurdles and became the number seven best performer in school history with a time of 59.63 seconds. And next, the KU track team will travel to Arkansas to compete in the National Relay Championships. I tell you what, those uh, track names are really tongue twisters. They really are. And the um, events are kind of interesting. I've never been Qua a huge... What's it called? Quadrangular? Quadrangular. Well, that's Quadrangular. between the four teams. But some of them... Duterov throwing that looks the, hard. I figure... I, I would imagine the golf names will be a little easier. I think so. <laughs> the KU men's golf team competed well last year in the Big 12 Championship, walking away with third place. But according to their head coach, this year will be more competitive and the three-day event began Monday in Tulsa, Oklahoma and five of the ten schools competing are ranked in the top 17 of Golf Week's latest ranking. The Jayhawks know they need to bring their best game and focus on hitting fairways and greens if they want to succeed in this tournament and they currently sit in eighth place after day two. Yeah, so hopefully they can um, hit Move up a little bit on the rankings. Yeah, hopefully. But moving on to my favorite segment, I come bearing good news. A man stood over a freeway overpass near Detroit last Thursday and threatened suicide. However, 13 trailer tractors lined up underneath, the, underneath to break his fall. Troopers closed off the highway so the trucks could stay in the middle of the interstate. And as you can see that picture, the troopers were asking trucks as they pulled up if you could just park close to one another so to help ensure that they would break his fall. Well, that's certainly amazing, and I'm glad he's okay. Also, for I come bearing good news, some good news is that the guy who stopped the gunman at the Waffle House. Yeah. Was, we talked about an A block. To have the courage to rush someone that's just mentally deranged, take his gun and throw it across the counter. He not only saved his life, but he saved many lives in the Waffle House. So thank you for his converted service. That's true. Not all heroes wear capes. You know what? I like that, but I like if caps better on all heroes. Caps? Like yeah, it just sounds, it flows better than capes. Cap is a hat. I, I know what a cap <laughs> is. <laughs> all right, Emily, what are your plans for this weekend before finals? Oh, Study? I don't know. It's going to be nice Saturday, so it may do it a little version darty, if you know what I mean. Hmm. Um, yeah, Friday, it'll be nice. I'll be anchoring a show Friday, so that's what I'll be doing, and uh, that's about it. Nothing too special, you. Well, on Saturday, I have a packed day. I'm going to be at the football spring training, and then I have formal. So oh, half, I had mines last weekend. It was a ton of fun. It's going to be warm, though. I don't know how my hair is going to hold up for in my dress. It's going to get poofy and disgusting. So We'll do it before and then have one of those people that follows you around. Do it. Oh, okay. I'll just hire one. Yeah. Also, this weekend, I'll, I'm, I actually lied. I do have kind of a big weekend. I'm going to the uh, Royals game on Sunday. So Are you? That should be very much fun. Pretty exciting. I've never been to a Royals game. It's different in Chicago. People like 
I feel like you guys go to Royals games all the time, but no one really goes to the Cubs games. It's kind of hard to get to them. Well, I mean, yeah, when you live like four hours outside the city. I do not live four hours outside the <laughs> you're city. Not, you don't live in Chicago. You live in Geneva. I live about 40 minutes. Alrighty, well, that's Keely McCormick. I'm Malik Jackson. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you back here for our last show next Wednesday, 9 a.m.